Welcome all of those of you who are jo uh, joining us online. Um, I just got my first Christmas present. So uh, now there will be no excuse. And don't think I'm just going to use it for after church, okay? <laughs> Oh, no. it, it, you know, yeah, this is a friendship time bell, too. And I don't believe that this is turned on. Okay, I don't believe it is, but that's okay. Although, we should take advantage of it if we've got it. Hello, hello. No. 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 There's another one here. One, two. Okay. All right. Um, let's pray and we shall get started with um, the after church. Um, Father, as we uh, continue to hopefully consider the, um, the, in the incredible idea that the treasure in heaven is actually you and yours and that our lives are um, best spent in building up that treasure to give ourselves a holy to the, 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 the setting aside of treasure because we don't have to worry about being selfish. We don't have to worry about it being something that I would pursue with bad motives. Because if I pursue it for your glory, then I know that I'm right where I should be. And so I just pray that, that, that you would continue to bless our understanding uh, this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, before, and I'll give you a chance to ask your questions. Um, before, um, I, I just want to reiterate, reiterate something that uh, I always get a little nervous when I start... Um, I'm putting things forward that I can't tell you, okay, here is exactly where it says that in Scripture. Um, and uh, so some of this is just my own reasoned thought that, uh, my goodness, if this is what Jesus teaches us to be, and this is the nature of our treasure, and this is how we attain the treasure, then how could it possibly be something that I would selfishly try to amass or to build. And if I am going to pursue the kingdom treasure as Jesus has told me to, then it has to be for selfless reasons because that's what he taught. So that's the reason that, uh, but I, I do like to give that disclaimer that um, th this is a reasoned argument and not necessarily one that I can point to and say this is what Paul or, or Jesus or somebody um, said. I think it's Im implicit. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Question. Uh, first, Thank you for the paradigm shift, because honestly, the whole treasure thing which didn't really make sense in my mind either, but this does Good. completely. Um, and then my question is, do you think that through our process of sanctification, it's possible for us to experience kingdom treasure here while we're here now in this life? Um, that's a great question. Like, um, is our capacity for enjoying God's presence, it grows right. as we become right. sanctified, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it, it, it does grow as we become sanctified. It becomes more real to us. And there are real, tangible blessings that God gives those who pursue Him yeah. in, in, in this world. Um, I, I, I think it's very clear that Jesus is not just saying that our treasure is only in this world, but that there is reward and treasure in heaven. But yes, I do believe that we can, um, and, and, and part of that, part of it is the, the process of sanctification because the more you become sanctified, the more sanctified you become, the more you realize that it's all about Him and not about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's a blessing. And, 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 and the, you know, even if we go through times of struggle, of, uh, of pain, of suffering, of things that just don't seem to make any sense, we at the same time have a joy that comes from the realization that, that our Lord is perfectly capable of taking it away if He wanted to, and if He doesn't, there's going to be a, there's a reason. So we trust in Him more, and that I, I think is a great blessing. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's a good question. Anybody? Yes, ma'am, Miss Janet. 
like we're experiencing that same love that the Father has for the Son, for the thing, and we're and we partake of that as we're in Christ with mm -hmm. one another. It's like I have so much more. I I, I have so much more blessing because I am loving you mm -hmm. than I would ever have. Absolutely, and, 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 and we become instruments of, of his love, and in that sense, we become somewhat otherworldly, and, and that's got a kind of a spooky sound to it, but it really is. We, we, we take on attributes of the heavenly side of the kingdom of God and, and while we're still here on earth. Um, yes, uh, I, I think that's a very important part of it that we do learn the, the value of loving God and being loved by Him and loving each other far above the things that we thought were valuable going into all this. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, I want to thank Jesus for His blood. That's the only way I'll be able to make it. There's no way else. So Amen. I thank God for that. And then I'm still on the construction. He's working on me. My question is like, we're talking about self-possession, uh, give away to the needy. Right. Um, those, uh, back then, like a thousand, five hundred years ago, those was follower Christ. Right now we call ourselves Christian. I think that's a big difference because we didn't do what we really supposed to do. Nobody, like, my example in Haiti, back to Haiti when I was little, I see my family like every Christian come together, whatever we have one meal, we share it together. Here, whenever I see you, I see you. Yeah. Um, and then there is no calling, like there is no connection. There is nobody find out if you, they don't see you, if you still alive or if you die. Yeah. And then I understand it's cause of the bill, you have to work. You have to do this. But I see a different Christian like he than Haiti. Haiti, you see like people check on you, see what's going on, and then they come in, we get together, we pray. They don't have that here. Uh, ex uh, really a very um, expansive point there. Um, one thing that they have in Haiti that I, I was immediately taken with when we first started going was a sense of community. Now, if you live in other parts of the country, you have a sense of community. You, you have people who live in the same area, close to each other. They, there's much more of a sense of community. When you get into bigger cities, especially when you get in a place like this, which is transient, and people come and go all the time, and there's, there's very little sense of community, in fact, the, the best sense of community that, that you have in a place like this is through your local church, but you're 100% correct. One of the things that you know, we, we're surprised at, and, and, and I kind of make a joke to um, Pastor Jephthah um, you, you know, all the time about being on American time or being on Haitian time because you know, Haitian time is not exactly the same. But part of the reason for that is you're walking down the street in Haiti and you see a friend, you don't just say, hey man, how you doing? Catch you later you stop and talk to them, you know? And, and, and there's a, there, how are you doing? How's the family? How, you know, but you can't just walk past somebody and if you happen to meet 10 people on your way to an appointment, you're late for the appointment, you know? And, and it's part of that, that different culture, different lifestyle, yes. And, and, and that's one of the things that in, in a church like ours that we have to constantly actually fight for because our, inclination is to fall into that, you know, to, to not have that sense of community. So that's a very good point. Um, that's something that we as a church and, and, and all churches need to, need to, um, to, to develop. And, 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 and that's, you know, what's, you know what's kind of hard about that? Because it's not all the church's fault. I mean, I just got a I just got a Christmas gift from the after churchers. <laughs> I know. So I've, I've, I, this is a community. Okay. Most of the people who were in this room a few minutes ago got up and left. 
Now, if they tell me, oh, we have no community in this church, well, you left. Yeah. You know, we have a community on Wednesday night, right? That we meet. You're not here. Or some, not you, but somebody, <laughs> somebody's not here, right? You know, and, and we... We have a men's breakfast on Saturday morning and a lot of people aren't there, you know, so there has to be an effort on both sides. Right. Yeah. You busy for the bills thing, whatever. Yeah. But my question is that back then, those people were really up to God, followers. Right. But here you can, you see now, now that he's not the same. Like those people like, uh, like willing to say, give everything away just to follow God. They was focused all them saving Jesus. That's that's all they were. But now you like it's so many other things, distraction. You we really not focused. It, 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 it is it, it is that way and part of that I mean there's the 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 difference between life in Haiti and life here is such an interesting study. Okay? For one thing, um, there's not hardly, there, at least there hasn't been, there's more so now, but no geographic mobility in Haiti. A lot of times people live and die in the same 20 mile radius. They don't travel around, they don't move around unless they're moving to the big city, to Port-au-Prince. And, and so therefore, you are raised and growing up in the same uh, you know, neighborhood with people who have been there two, three generations. Yeah. Kay, Kay no, noticed again on our way to, to church this morning, she just made the comment, do you realize that I think we're the only people in our neighborhood who actually go to church? Because nobody, is, everybody's out doing their thing on Sunday morning and virtually no one goes to church. I mean, there's like one nativity scene in our whole neighborhood. You know, so it's it's a part of it is is where we live and and the nature but part of it is what we discussed last week the value system we have adopted part of the value system when you start talking about people who need God well the actually the 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 the, the less affluent the culture the more they need God and and even a church like ours who are in we understand how important God is. We're still in the middle of an influent society. And part of the value system of our society has leached into what we think. And we put our trust in ourselves. You know, we put our trust in what we do um, and, 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 and not, not, not in God. Um, and in fact, that, that is something that I, I actually didn't go into. But, you know, we've been talking about this whole idea of of, uh, of rebelling against God's providence, of trying to gain, get anxiety by trying to control the uncontrollable. I mean, goodness gracious, you're trying to control your eternity by building up treasure in heaven. That's the ultimate mistake. You know what I mean? Because you, you, you don't even know what it's like. And still, there's all these people out there saying, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm building up treasure. You know, I'm doing good. Um, so it, it's the same. People who have less are actually more likely, and, and the statistics here are amazing, okay, that um, the, the, the people in the lower incomes will give more of their income than the people in the higher incomes. Um, and, and that doesn't mean that the people in the higher incomes don't give great gifts, but it, it's like what Jesus says, the widow's might, you know, she gave out of her poverty rather than giving out of her wealth in order to beat the tax break you, you see and but but there's if you look at the, the 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 people who respond to tragedies to natural disasters far more in the in the lower incomes than in the higher ones okay so yes it's a a, a very interesting study uh Rhonda, you had a question i don't know if you, you still had it, had it. Yeah. Which is, is, it's almost like one of those verses where it sounds too good to be true. It just sounds too big. Right. But um, it, it, um, yeah. so it, it's making me think that 
you know, we have God's presence in a measure here, right. and we can have fullness of joy. But wow, when it's face to face, right. there, we need a we need a different word for fullness instead of the yeah yeah fullness yeah. 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 of joy. It's beyond what our no eye has seen, nor the nor ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has in store for those who love Him. Yeah. So it, it's beyond um, even the, our, our wildest imagination. Yeah. So. Um, yes, ma'am, Miss Indy. Just one question. First of all, I always enjoy when you explain the Greek meaning versus. Good. And I wondered if you could expound upon or let us know, let us know what the Greek words are for the good pleasure. You said that okay. was really one word. And yeah. it's, it's a single word in the Greek. And, 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 and what it means is to deem something as good, to, to determine something as good, and therefore to choose it. Now, let, let's put this in a, an entirely human context, okay? We have to put, it, it's, it's written for humans for us to understand. We have to also keep in the back of our mind God's immutability, His eternal decree, and anything that He has decided, He's always throughout all eternity decided, He doesn't make up His mind, in other words. But this is a way that we can understand it, okay? Have, have you ever, have you ever uh, had a real tough decision and you know what they tell you to do is get out a legal piece of paper, put a line down the middle, write all the positive things on one side and all the negative things on the other side, and then try to wrestle between the two. And you're going to look at one side and say, that's good, so I'll choose it. Or that's better, I'll choose it. Yeah, you're not always right, but you, you know, you, you try to choose that way. So the word good pleasure actually means not just the pleasure in the doing of what you've decided is good, but a pleasure in the choosing that as good. So when we put it into the context of it, it is your loving, compassionate, merciful fathers who knows how many hairs you've got on your head and considers you to be of so much greater value than sparrows, than ravens, or flowers in the field. Okay? That heavenly father is delighted. He is pleased not only with the fact that he is going to give you the kingdom in the ways that we talked about it, but he is delighted in the choice to give you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure. It's not just his pleasure. So yeah, it's, it, that's like a, almost a fullness of pleasure, if you will, to go, go back to, to what that means. It, it, it mean, Now, of course, we know God doesn't make those Hmm, what should I do? Should I give him or, or not? But that, that's a way of expressing that, that the whole thing is to him a delight. He's delighted. And then, of course, when we start talking about giving the kingdom, well, the idea of giving it is access, citizenship. You are, you know, you, you, you get to walk in the front door. You know, there's Jesus at the gate. You know, and they're going to look in your eyes and do I know you? You know, that's the key. Not do you know him? Do you know, does he know you? Because he's the one that makes that decision. So that's giving. That's the, his good pleasure. But also his good pleasure to give his flock the resources of the kingdom. The incredible resources because we are adopted as sons and daughters of, of God. And when we talk about human adoption, what happens to that little girl, that little Skylar, who, who uh, all of a sudden, because she's adopted into that family, what happens to Freddie and Egle's resources, all that they own? It's now hers because she's adopted into the family. And that's, that's as much hers as if she was a biological child. So now the kingdom, the riches, the holiness, the eternality, the closeness to God, all of the amazing things that that includes, it is all ours because we've inherited it, because we are heirs of the kingdom and fellow heirs of Christ, as Paul said. I don't know if you think that's good, but I think it's, uh, you know, uh, to, to me, that's, that, that's, that, that's, a, that's an amen. You, 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 you can say amen to that if you want to. Okay. 
that answer the question? Yes. Yes, sir. I was just reading that in Romans uh, eight seventeen, and I was just trying to figure out like we can share with like the inheritance of the good stuff, and it also says that with Christ we share in His sufferings. Like, what sufferings do we share with Him? Wow, great question. Great question. Um, the the again, when we're when when we're saved, what what is the difference between being given the kingdom and seeking the kingdom? Okay, there's two aspects there. Okay, you're given the kingdom through salvation. It is a gift. For as grace you've been saved through faith, it's not of yourself. It's a gift of God so no one can boast. Okay, it is a gift. Salvation is a gift. But however, once we are saved, we make it through that narrow gate. Okay, got a lot of baggage, but there is a hard road in front of us. There is suffering. There is difficulty. There is, uh, uh, you, in other words, what Paul wrote about himself. That's what happens when you hit Satan's radar. When you're not in Satan's radar like Jesus was or like Paul was or like Peter's was. As so many Christians, they just find a nice little comfortable parking place to wait, watch the parade go by, and wait for Jesus to come back. And now, if you're inactive for the, for the good of the kingdom there, it doesn't mean you lose your salvation because you didn't gain it in the first place. What it means is that you're less effective for the kingdom of God, and the devil's not going to bother you. Okay? Because you're already exactly where he wants you. You know, it's when you start sharing the gospel. It's when you start working for the kingdom. It's when you start calling out the culture and saying, this is wrong, this is evil. All of a sudden, you hit Satan's radar. And when you hit Satan's radar, he's going to persecute you. I mean, if they persecuted the master, they're going to persecute the, the, the disciple. It's just the way it goes. And you will share in his sufferings. It doesn't mean you're going to go to a cross. It doesn't mean you are, are sharing in some way his salvation other than to share in his suffering. In other words, to share in the suffering that he did, which is to suffer for our sins for, for me. So you share in that in a sense. Okay. So it's, it's one of those uh, kind of double, deeper than one meaning type of things. That's when all the fires are going to start. That's when the fire starts. And that's, and, and that's when we start asking ourselves, um, is, is this really worth it? You know, yes. is, is this, uh, you know, maybe if I just kind of, kind of snuck into the background and didn't say anything, you know? You know? Another one gonna start up. That one I know is gonna start. That's it. But you know we've got. I didn't raise my hand, but I'm sorry. I give you a demerit. Okay. But but when Jesus part is about the question like when Jesus was was in the death was in the wilderness for the forty days. Yeah. Right away. You know this is the beginning. Ministry then right away the devil's dead. Devil knew who he was from the beginning. Okay. You know, of of course I think that perhaps when the armies of God came down to announce his birth, that probably had something to do with it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he probably knew my goose is cooked. So I'm gonna try to get this guy from the get go, you know. He's he's uh, <laughs> he to get him, try to get him uh, that's why they had to keep moving him as a baby. Yeah. So we tried, tried to, to do everything. Babies. Yeah, absolutely. To kill all those. Kill all those babies. All those babies. Yeah. yeah. That's evil. Still them. That is just absolute evil. evil oh, oh, you know, yes. Yes. To, to do that. Um, but that's, that's the nature of, uh, of, uh, of the world without Christ. And, and, and I, I hate to say it this way, but that's our nature without Christ. That's where we were. Our culture, to a large degree, holds us in check. But, you know, the old uh, story of Lord of the Flies, you get a bunch of kids out on a desert island by themselves, they quickly revert back to the savage that's in the heart, you know. Our, our education and culture slips away real quickly, you know. So yeah. the devil was working through the king yeah, uh, he King Herod, was, absolutely. He was, he was in him. Yeah. Oh, you have the picture in Revelation 12. Yeah. You got the dragon sitting in front of the woman when she gives birth, to try to gobble okay, up the yeah, child, yeah. try to kill him immediately. That's, and that, and that, and that's, the, the, that's the devil the, wanting to destroy Jesus. Right, right. From so the get go. So there was a different picture. Yeah. Same oh, thing. Okay, same thing. Right. Thank you, brother.
you know, it's funny when you, you, you talk about these things and everything. And you know, when you're young, you think you know you're gonna live forever. You know what I mean? I think it's brilliant what God does and what He does with us when you know you start getting older. You know, and in my case and other people here, you know, you're pushing 70 or older or whatever. You see the reality of life that you know it's going to come to an end. You see it in the mirror every day, and you see it in life itself. And, and then you look at your kids, and uh, man, it's just—it's something that it, it really is. It's something that really, you know, that's how much he loves us. You start focusing on that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah Frank, I've, I've heard that old people are like that. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I imagine that someday when I get old, I'll, I'll, I'll think the same way. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. It, it becomes much, much real. And, and what gets me is the, the really, the older people who are still just as defiant and rebellious and hateful of God as they were when they were kids. It's like they haven't learned. Um, and, and they somehow think that because I can shake my fist at uh, the afterlife and, and believe that it's not there, that they're going to be immune from it. So, you know, that's tragic, uh, truly tragic. I think, Rick, you had your hand up. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to make a comment because uh, Preston mentioned uh, when they killed all the, the firstborn. And I'm just going to say, well, we're still killing babies today and to a much greater, much greater degree. degree. Yeah. That's the uh, first thing that came through, came through my mind. I mean, you 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 think about uh, how wicked and evil Herod was for doing that, um, and then you think about yikes! What about our culture when all of the pretensions of culture are stripped away, and you're just looking at cold-blooded murder? You know, it's legal and the right. Yeah. So, evil. Yes, sir. I just want to add something, if it's okay. Um, when you really need uh, to feel the kingdom of God or the presence of God, if you can do your service sacrifice like a, early in the morning, like 3 o'clock, I've been doing that for 14 years. Boy, oh boy, you feel all the kingdom, the Holy Spirit, you laugh, you cry, you jump, you dance. It's like God is right there and hugging you and... This prison is so amazing. So you, this happens at three in the morning. If yes. yeah, no, I've been doing that. Well, for, I've been for every, yeah, every to spend time with the Lord. And yes, like five days a week, three o'clock. Mm -hmm. yeah. You feel the kingdom, the prison, and you yeah. can like feel like you really like a sound. Oh my God, that feels so. Good. You, you know, you you're 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 touching on a really important point that um, we kind of hit all around. Because what Sonia's questions earlier was, is through our sanctification, is there a reward that is here on earth? Um, and to get up in the middle of the night and to spend time in prayer, I read these biographies of these Puritan pastors. And it wasn't unusual for them to wake up at midnight and pray until the worship service for their each and every single person who's going to be there and, and, and the, the understanding of the message and to pray for, for in that way. And, and if not midnight, three or four or five in the morning and to spend long periods of time in prayer and those are the means of grace and they're not called the means of grace for nothing. You know, these are ways that we foster grace in us and that we grow and we're blessed. We're blessed by that. If, if, you, if you sleep uh, un, until 8 o'clock um, and, and you don't spend that kind of time with the Lord in prayer, well, it's not that you're going to be punished for it. You're just going to miss the blessing. Right. You know? and, and I say this all the time when I'm teaching evangelism and, and people going out and sharing the gospel. If, if, if you don't share the gospel, it doesn't mean that this person's not going to get saved. It just means somebody else is going to get the blessing you know, of, of, of telling them about Jesus. And so, it, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of blessing that we get by faithfully following in, in Christ. And, and it's not just, it's certainly, once again, I just have to say, it, and I keep going back, I, I, I can't believe when I read passages like this and, and, and I see how you build up, and I research it, and I did research it a lot more than I actually brought out because 
it, you know, it was just too much, uh, too, too many verses, too many um, examples. But virtually everything the New Testament tells us about building up kingdom treasure is wrapped in humility. It is wrapped in meekness. It is taking the back seat in the room. It is wrapped up in the contriteness of heart. It is wrapped up in everything but arrogance and pride and and money and getting ahead and materialism. How on earth do these guys get that out of scripture? Because it's just not there. It's just not there. How do you, how do you manipulate people to believe that God wants you to have everything when it's exactly the opposite? That those who are, 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 are humble are the ones that, that, that God is gonna bless. So, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. Yes, sir. So when, when the congregation of the church is not teaching the truth, teaching the gospel, that, that's like just be able to snug in and, and it's, 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 it's the devil that's, it's just like when he changed the one word with, 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 with Eve. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same idea. I mean, you you got places that think they're right. following uh, or worshiping the Lord uh, and, and, and they're, they're headed to the well, they found a, what they think is a better way to worship the Lord. Okay, they've added well, to no, it. Well, no, I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, the, the not, not so much the preachers, I'm talking about the congregation. Oh. So it's the same thing what Paul was talking about, you can be wished. Yeah. You, you know. Uh, uh, those, th those who are kind of following after those who are teaching false. Right, they, right, Accepting right. a falsehood and, and calling it truth, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. with that, um, because you know what you know, or you you in the right spots, because of what, because of of the Lord, you know, yeah. it is is yeah. so so. There are those that that he he knew before he was in your mother's womb, so yeah. he's going to put you in the right spots. Right. You, you know. If for you us, know about the adoption, you know, that part of it, so. Right, for us to figure out why God does what he does and allows what he allows, yeah. he uses even those with um, ulterior motives to accomplish his will. Yeah. I'll give you a great example. When um, Kay started to take our daughters to church, I wouldn't go. Uh, I, I wouldn't have anything to do with it. So the only church that she could actually get me to on occasion go to was a very liberal PCUSA, no gospel um, uh, um, a church. And I liked it because it had a park right across the street. It was on the intercoast, not on the intercoast, but on the middle river. And I could go out in that park and I could read and do what I wanted to while the girls went into church. Okay, almost never would go there. But on one Sunday, I went in there and listened and I'm in the back road. I'm already three sheets to the wind at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. But I remember hearing a man talking about building a hospital in Haiti. And I can remember that something stirred in me at that moment. Okay. And the Holy Spirit used that situation to start a process that would eventually lead to my salvation. Okay, so he uses the strangest things. So we, 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 we are called to teach, preach, adhere to, learn, follow the truth, every single one of us. But that doesn't mean God is not going to use places that are not teaching the truth because there was no truth at all. I mean, this is the kind of church where the, the, the pastor would, you know, uh, get up and say, you know, I, I, my, my New Year's resolution is I'm drinking way too much beer. I'm just going to cut back on my beer, you know. And, and one of the things that he would do would be to give book reviews about non-Christian books, whatever the top ten sellers on the New York Times list was. Yeah, and, and, and really? <laughs> uh, uh, what would you say? Did, did we ever see a sermon go over 15 minutes? Maybe. Yeah, you don't, Kay doesn't remember those things, I do. Um, but I mean, uh, uh, the, God used that. 
and, and, and he can use any situation. You know, I, I never would have, I, I, you never caught me in a church like this. You never caught me in churches that I eventually wanted to go to to get the, 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 the truth. But I, I, I would on occasion sit in the back of that church. Yeah. And that's when, when God started to, to, to soften my heart, you know, towards that end. So, yeah, it, it, it's, he, he, he does amazing things. And, and we, we, the last thing we want to do is put him in a box. But putting God in a box, leaving God ability does not mean we don't seek the truth to the best of our ability. Okay. okay? Yeah. We, 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 we seek it as, as best as we can. Yeah, because cause I, I was driving yesterday, I had to go four miles and do what I do. But I was driving and I remember thinking, some of them just said, man, I'm 69, so I'm like, why is it that now, you know, I, and I'm all these years that I've wasted, mm -hmm. and and that's why the scripture says, the Lord is thy youth." Don't 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 let the devil bring that up to you. Well, 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 no, okay. I, I I know I know I heard. I know exactly what you're talking about because I had exactly the same um, uh, the, the same thoughts yeah, when I, I was saved when I was first saved. Yeah. Um, I, I can remember sitting in a restaurant and complaining and saying, why on earth would God waste 20 years of my life and not, uh, uh, not take me and use me all those 20 years? Yeah. You know what the man said to me? He said, better 20 years of wasted life and 20 years of a ministry than 70 years of wasted life and eternity in hell yeah. because that's what you deserve. Well, you know, I, I had heard a sermon because I got Charles Spurgeon and all the others that I listened to. So, but I heard him preaching that about wherever God starts you at 40, 20, it's the time that he right. wants you to, right. he, he, you know, and, 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 and because everybody, had, you know, in, in the entire population that, that, are, that, are, are, the, that are the Lord's, there is the spot that he wants you to, right, them to be in, and so you absolutely. start where you are and do what you need to do. Yeah. So, so no, he he's not gonna fool me with that. Yeah. I just, I just know that. I, I just just, just to come up, some thought come in my head. I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So they were saying seventy, and you good? I'm like, man, you know, be I hope that ain't what it yeah. is. <laughs> but, but. I, I, I think the same thoughts. You know, if, if what what if. 20 years of ministry when I was young. Yeah. Um, and the Lord knew exactly what he wanted out of me. He knew exactly what he wanted out of you. Yeah. And part of what he wanted out of you was the time you spent away from him. Yeah. And uh, to learn the lessons that you needed to learn so that you can be the kind of Christian that he wants you to be. Right, right. Okay? Well, that's the same thing and and he's at, wise. Like the kids that tend here or those that are in Lord, I'm like for the bud, the bud I got for PJ bud. But yeah. anyway, it's it's just a joy and a good thought that know that he has the foundation yeah. at 11, 12 yeah. to 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 be able to walk that walk. You know, yeah. to walk walk the Christian. Now whether he fall away, but the scripture says that he will return. See, right. so our our job is not to to. Uh, um, um, uh, be the, the ones that fret whether he's going to fall away or be used in a that's powerful right. way. Our mm -hmm. job is to him give him the foundation. That's right. Give the that's foundation. Right. That's what we do. Um, yes, ma'am. Miss Beth. So, uh, I'm listening to everything you say, and I, I sometimes think that I never want to forget where I came from. Yeah. Because if I forget that, then that brings other all kinds of stuff. So that brings that to my attention. Because I, I see people um, every day, <coughs> what I do, and to remember that. Yes. So I accept by yes. God's grace. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, absolutely. and that, that brings you back to the it does. humility that you have. It does. I, I, don't, I don't know how he is with you, but if I ever start forgetting, he reminds me. <laughs> you know, he's really good at reminding me of what you know where, what where I should be, and, and what I should be, and, and he kind of, 
slows you down when you start complaining, you know, about things. Uh, it is like, okay, you know, let, let's look at the reality of it. But I know exactly what, what you're saying. It, it is good for us to remember the where we came from. I think it's also good for us, um, and I think about Jesus and the church at Ephesus, I think, where I want you to remember where you've fallen from. I want you to remember where you were at first. And I want you to go back there. I want you to go back to that pristine. I don't mean before you're saved. I mean after you're saved and there's this wonder, there's this, this amazement. Everything is brand new. And then after a while it starts getting, you know, regular and mundane. And, 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 and he wants us to have that same excitement and joy. Um, that we had when we first came to know him, when we first realized, oh my goodness, look what he's done for me. Yeah, amen. Okay, any other questions? Is this Miss, Miss Donna? Sorry, folks, I came a little late to the party. I just got here, so I apologize if what I say has been addressed already. The sermon today, the Lord really spoke to my heart today through, through the sermon. Um, and I, w I was listening to you and I was like, let him get there, let him get there. Let him, I'm like praying. I hope he gets there, I hope he gets there. He treasures Jesus, he treasures Jesus, he treasures Jesus, and you've got there. So, I, was, I was baiting you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> building up a little drama, you know. <laughs> um, it, it was interesting how the Lord was bringing so many scriptures to my mind about the, the main thing is this. Jesus told the parable about the uh, merchant seeking fine pearls. And when he found one of great price, he sold everything he had and he bought that. That's treasure, that's kingdom treasure. Our pearl is Jesus. Our pearl is Jesus. And uh, so many things brought, the Lord brought up to my mind from the sermon today about, and, and from a practical standpoint, seeking kingdom treasure is not selfish. Right. When we walk in the spirit, we are seeking God's will. And so when we're seeking God's will, that naturally brings glory to the Lord. It's when we walk in the flesh, and the flesh is where selfishness right, resides, right? right. Yeah. When we're seeking things after the flesh, that doesn't, that doesn't lay up treasure in heaven at all. Well, the, the, the interesting um, dynamic there is the, the difficulty we have as fallen individuals of truly understanding the nature of kingdom treasure <coughs> and divorcing our, ourselves from the idea that treasure is something that is tangible or something that we would consider to be precious here on earth. And, and, and it's not just money. It's, it's the things that money can buy. And, and Jesus says it. Okay, this, this is what gets me. Talk about um, other scriptures. Once you start looking at this particular concept, you, you find almost everything Jesus teaches in the New Testament to corroborate it. You know, that, this is what he taught. He taught humility. He taught brokenness. Blessed are the poor in spirit, you know, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the world. I mean, he goes over and over and he teaches us that, that this is the, the, the value system that, that, we, that we should be belonging. But at the same time, he says, okay, seek after kingdom treasure, all right? Then he turns, in Matthew, he turns right around and says you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and money. You can't serve God and mammon or treasure because if you do, you're going to hate the one and love the other, right? And so if I take that principle of I can't serve God and any kind of treasure, how can I have treasure in heaven? You know, how can, how, how can my treasure in heaven be anything that is tangible, that, that I have built up that... I am going to be rewarded for. And when Jesus talks about your reward will be great, how can my reward be great in, king, in the kingdom of God? Because that brings glory to me, you know? I used to tell people all the time about uh, Pastor Sudwan, my, my mentor, my, my dear friend. 
that uh, I was going to stand outside the street in his house and tell people that I knew him when he was alive. You know, uh, that, that was going to be my claim to fame, that I just knew this guy who was such a godly man that he was going to have this big, huge house. Well, that's a picture of, of that value system. I'm using that value system to define he's going to have the big house and I'm going to have the shack down the street. Well, wait a minute, how can that be? How can that actually be? If we really want to get serious about this, how can there be some haves and have nots in, in, in even if the tiniest degree, how can that be in heaven? Because we're going to give everything that we build everything to the down. Lord anyway. Everything to Him. So everything. And, 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 and Donna, I think that that statement, and I, the more I thought about this, the more I realized I would be mortified. I'm, I would be mortified <clears throat> even now thinking that there was something in heaven that brought glory to me. I would be mortified if I got to heaven and I've got this big old, this big old treasure room and somebody's got just, you know, a little, you know, drawer in a bank. I would be mortified because what would that do? That would puff me up. That would be me and it wouldn't be the glory of God. So I don't see how that can be. You know, I just don't see how it can be. I, I, th I think that we would be devastated if that was the way it was. Yeah. And one of the scriptures, too, was when John, in John 14, I think it was, or 13, where Jesus, 14, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. So we have the idea that we're laying up treasure for ourselves and we're going to build our mansion. Mm -hmm. But no, it's Jesus who's building our dwelling place. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kingdom. That's our place, right? Right. Okay. And, the, and, and who knows what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't think it's going to look like the, the square New Jerusalem that came out of heaven. I, I, I honestly don't think it is. Um, um, to tell you the truth, I think that when God looked at the world after, after he made it and he said it was good, I don't know how you get any better than it's very good. That's what I'm hoping it'll be. You know, back to the garden. Yes, Rick. Really, if you want to get technical, I don't feel like we deserve any kind of reward. I mean, we've been compelled to serve. We didn't choose to serve God. He chose yeah. us, and the Holy Spirit compels us to serve Him and to to do uh, Christian work here. Amen. So why do why are we laying yeah, up why, the why, why should we get the for ourselves? Yeah. It should all be His reward. Yeah. It should all be uh, about Him and not not about us. And, about toss. Uh, Crown, crown uh, yeah. tossing your crown or something. Uh, uh, well, it's kind of the same idea. I mean, you can ask, how did they get crowns in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> but they're taking whatever crown they had, almost, hey, that's a great image. I didn't think of that. I, I have to go back and, and look at that because in a sense, that would be taking what I've earned, if you will, my crown, and I've thrown it at his feet. That's what I would want to do yeah. with any treasure I had. I would want to throw it at his feet because it's all about him and not about not about me. Right. That's in Revelation. It's in Revelation. It's in Revelation. Yeah. yeah. It, and it's the twenty-four elders surrounding the four amazing creatures, surrounded by the myriad upon myriad angels. You know, that's the scene of the throne room of God. And also, there is an innumerable throng there. The church triumphant with palm branches and harps in their hands and great saint. Yes, ma'am. So what, what you were just um, talking about of not wanting your, your staff to be to be big in heaven, my staff to be small, that, 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 that seems to fit really well with the parable of the treasures, I think we call it, where um, uh, whether I do, I, I take a little bit and make a little bit, yeah. and take a little yeah. bit and make a bunch, still the... Um, the response is the same, well yeah. done. Right, if, absolutely. You know, well done, not like yeah. you, you, well done, well done, well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, you're, you, 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 you go to that you street, can, and you go down to that track. street. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just the effort, sure still gets that well done, well yeah. done. Yeah, I think that if you start, it, like I just said, if you, if you recognize this, and then you start looking through all these teachings that Jesus did in the New Testament, and even what Paul would do, you're going to start realizing, wow, this is, this is, that's the reason I say it's a reasoned 
thought. It, it's, it's reasoned. It's, ba it's based in Scripture, even though he doesn't come out and say th 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 this is it. I think that everything he taught on earth was direct us, directing us towards that and that kind of a, a, of a selfless life in his presence. I mean, you live in the presence of God. Why would you want to, why would I want to talk about me? You know, <laughs> you know, but uh, so anyway, yes, that's uh, that's amazing. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I re I remember, if I remember correctly, in the past that one of your favorite, if not your favorite, verse is Matthew six thirty three: Seek first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and His, and righteousness. His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And that's kind of similar with this scripture. I have a real personal question because. Um, you know, God's in charge of our salvation. He's also in charge of our sanctification. But how has your personal understanding of seeking first the kingdom of God grown in your time with the Lord on this earth? In other words, what you shared with us today, that's a mature understanding. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a mature understanding of God's kingdom. I'm just curious. Well, um... For those <laughs> well, um, it, 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 it's hard to answer that um, real quickly. Wrapped up in my conversion to come to Jesus was being taken out of alcohol. They happened simultaneously, okay? Um, and prior to that point in my life, um, I was in my dreams, an empire builder. That's all I was interested in, is building money, bu building businesses, building possessions. That, I mean, I, was, I, I had bought into that just like everyone else did. And when the Lord saved me, um, he, in the way I've described it many times, it's like waking up from a dream, a bad dream, where you try to run, but you can't run. You try to hit, but you can't hit. There's nothing in you. And then waking up from that dream and having just that, that little bit of, uh, of calm and peace. Oh, it was just a dream. And I really am not in that. But then when you wake up fully, you realize you're neck deep in quicksand and about to sink. And that's what it's like to wake up after 20 years of alcohol. Your life's a mess. Okay, and so he, he took away everything from me. Uh, all the businesses, uh, they all failed. Everything that we had and left me just enough of the lowest paying job, physical labor of one of my companies that if I did that from early morning to late at night, six days a week, I could keep food on the table and keep our girls in school. I did that for four years and um, literally walked around South Florida with a water bucket watering plants, okay? During those four years, God taught me that to seek his kingdom is of infinite worth. And I would not give anything for those four years because when those four years is where my total perspective changed and everything that I thought was important to me was no longer important to me and that he taught me that to seek the first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But then he changes your wanter to where it's not even, you don't even care about them, right? You know, and if you get them, and I've made this joke many times, if you get them, they all belong to somebody else. You know, he gives you the desires of your heart, but you don't own any of it because he's allowed you to have a blessing because you're seeking his kingdom. And so that was my original understanding of that. And that's why I would have said that that verse was constantly before me, seek first the kingdom of God, because guess what? You know, even after 20 years or 25 years of pursuing one direction, all of a sudden to totally change around, it doesn't all happen immediately. So that was a very pivotal verse for me to realize that God's kingdom was worth giving everything for. And of course, after that, first of all, he led me through that. He led me um, in, into other businesses. Um, and then ultimately, Ken Wackies, I mean, um, um, not Ken Wackies, um, Le uh, uh, Leo. Leo. Leo Schwab called me and said, uh, we just lost our computer software teacher 
Um, uh, it's two weeks before school starts. Do you know anyone who could fill in for us? <laughs> and I, while I was thinking, he kind of snuck in, do you think you might do it? And I made a really big mistake. <laughs> I said to myself, how much trouble could it be? <laughs> I learned real quickly how much trouble it could be. But that divorced me from business. And all of a sudden, I was the system administrator of their network, and I was teaching programming. Obviously, I had moved into computers and programming and things like that. And that was how God got me out of business, into ministry. And then one day, a woman named Vivian called me from here and says that we don't have a preacher. Would you come and preach one Sunday? Our preacher just left us, you know. And they still haven't gotten rid of me. <laughs> So that's, that, that's, it was part of that process, yeah. you know. So, so thank you for sharing that. I, I guess what, I, what I'm interested in because... Uh, so I just shared all that and that's not what no, you're interested yeah. in? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm comparing it to, to how God used, God used God in my life to bring me out of my sinful, you know, depraved life and brought me into him. But, when he first did that for me, I didn't have an, a full understand or a fuller understanding that he's a treasure. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I, I've grown into understanding that we're in the we're in the season. Wise men still seek him. Yeah. That you seek him, you seek to obey him. But some, uh, along the line, you begin to learn that the kingdom of heaven is upside down that the last are first, the first are last, and that the value system changes. And what happens, and I, the reason I keep hammering over and over again the means of grace, the means of grace, the means of grace, is through the means of grace we begin to have an altered value system and we begin to slowly recognize that Jesus is the prize. But to re recognize that my kingdom in heaven is the glory of God. That's recent. Yeah. You know, that's recent. That, that, I mean, that's, in fact, that's kind of a, a radical idea. I, I haven't read that anywhere. I, I, that, that's just something that, listen, I'm reasoning it through in my head, trying to figure out how can I be selfish and at the same time be selfless? How can that work? And, and so it, everything points to, well, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if it wasn't mine at all? It was all him. And we get there and it's just like, I don't care whether I contributed to this or not. Wow. You know, yeah. glory to God. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of the, what you just said. This, this is kind of a recent, I mean, we're all, our, our journey always is to become more and more conformed to the image of Christ. Right. And the Holy Spirit is in charge of that through the means of grace, through even, he uses even time. Yeah. Even the time of our life, the time span, to grow us closer and closer and closer to Him through His Word, through the through the fellowship, the communion of the saints. He uses all these things, and while He's doing that and, and causing us to to be closer to Him and have a greater love for Him, He's opening our eyes to more truth in right. His Word. Right. Yeah. And so the comment that you made just a few minutes ago, where you see that what you see what you taught today all over Scripture. Yeah. That's, yeah. an, that's an unveiling of your understanding and your sanctification that, wow. That's the illumination that's the, illumination. the Holy Spirit opens. Yes, and won't it be amazing to live for an eternity and to never stop learning <laughs> about God? That one out. I okay? Well, if God is infinite and you're not, then you're never going to know completely about him. So he keeps on opening up new doors for us now. Amazing. Imagine what it's going to be like to do that for an eternity. With a perfect okay. mind. Yes. And, and now, now we're starting to get into the, you know, you know <laughs> to, to the mind expanding things. But, you know, at least we've got a good start, right? Okay. Oh, yes, ma'am, Miss Janet. I was just going to say, um, when we become, we realize we're part of the body of Christ, that even if maybe I had an idea and somebody else speaks it, we rejoice in it because it's the body. Mm -hmm. I can't pray non-ceasing, but the body is praying yes. non-ceasing. Yes. Yes. The body, we are part of the body. Yeah. And are. it's like, and how we rejoice when 
another brother or sister or says something or gets a revelation that we had 10 years ago and yeah. you get it and you're yeah. like, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. You know, the body is like mm-hmm. coming alive. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very true. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to say uh, anything on the other side opposed to when you in line and you got a sheep to the goat and, 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 you, and you go on the side with the sheep, it is opposed to that other side with hell. It's going to, like you just said, it's going to be now on. No oh, matter what, what, what ground or nothing, you know. No, it, it, no nothing matters then. I, 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 I preached a sermon one time and I drew a picture in my mind. And this, this was back during the um, narrow gate, uh, hard road study in Matthew. And, 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 and I imagined what it must be like at the end of time. Here we are lined up in this really long line. And we're one by one, we're headed towards that gate. And one by one, Jesus takes us by the shoulder and pulls our face right up to his and looks deep in our eyes. And some he knows and some he doesn't know. And those he knows go in, those he doesn't know cast into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can you imagine being 200 people back in that line? and walking slowly up to that encounter with the Lord and you're saying, please let him know me, please let him know me, please let him know me, you know? And, and to be among that number is, is the greatest value of, of, of anything that we have. Yeah, yeah amen. I won't make it up, to the, I won't make it up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're right, brother, without a doubt. You will make it up there, because, not because on your power, but his power. And, and, and all it matters at that point, the only thing that matters is, does he know you? You, you see, he, he looks at us. Does he know you? And, and, and if he knows you, hey, listen, I, I, don't, I don't care how weak you are or what struggle you've got. You're, you're, you're well done, good and faithful servant, because, not because of what you've done, because of what I've done in you and, and through you. You know, amen. Yes, ma'am. I have a, um, you know the song, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know? Yes. I have a little plaque um, that someone had painted, and I have that uh, plaque in my house, and it says, Jesus Knows Me, This I Love. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. That is, uh, and that's it. That's the great importance. And, you know, people quite often say, hey, look, do, do you know Jesus? Um, and the question is, is do you have a good confidence that Jesus knows you, you know, because that's, uh, that's the great importance. Um, okay, we've got just a, about 10 minutes, great conversation. Let me do one thing before we leave, because there was one illustration that I had to leave out, but I think that it is helpful. Um, and so I, I wanted to give it to you so that if you ever run up against this kind of a question, um, and, and it has to do with the, the sort of paradox that we have here, because on the one hand, Jesus has said, seek the kingdom of God. And that word seek, the way he uses it there, means to seek relentlessly after something you know to be there. Something that is true. Something that not, not, not seeking in an irrational way, which would be like if we were seeking after you know, earthly treasure. But to seek after his kingdom because we know that it is there. So he teaches us that we must seek, but then he turns right around and says, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So on the one hand, he says, seek the kingdom. And on the other hand, he says, the kingdom's a gift. You can't seek it, you can't earn it. So how do those two, how do we represent those? And I told you, one talks about salvation, the other talks about sanctification. But let me give you an illustration that I I think is helpful. We, we just talked about the flowers of the field, and Jesus used them to make a point. He said, look at the flowers of the field, they neither toil nor spin, and yet Solomon in all of his glory cannot match one of those. And when we talked about it, we talked about, well, they don't worry about anything, okay? Obviously, they don't have minds to worry. God is the one who creates them. God is the one who decides what color they're going to be. God is the one who decides when they're going to bloom. And so, therefore, it is 100% God who brings that 
plant and that flower and that field of flowers about in all of its glory. But then you would need to think about something else about that plant. Because that plant actually has billions of little engines that take the sun and turn them into energy. So the plant is provided with what it needs to stay alive. Now it's provided by God, but God has given them that li those little engines to turn sunlight into, uh, into energy. By the same token, they're sending out roots down into the soil constantly sucking up water and nutrients so that they have what they need. And then I am told that for a plant to push a flower, especially a lily or something of that nature, for them to push that flower takes an immense amount of energy. So in other words, the plant is working hard at doing what God has created for it to do. And in a very real sense, that's us in our sanctification. God is the one who's given us the engines, the ability, the drive, the, 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 the tools that we need to seek after his kingdom, it's still his gift. He's still giving it to us. He's, he's still in control. We're not the ones in control, but we've got the tools that are necessary to accomplish what he's going to bring us about. Okay? So you just remember that. If somebody's got a, a confusion about, okay, well, what do you mean seek and what do you mean giving and, and how can God give something that, that you're telling me I have to go and be uh, work hard at? Well, guess use that as an example, as an illustration. No, actually, that was a nugget from this week. That just, that, it, that, that came to me, okay? Uh, there was another statement of similar idea, and, and the, it just kind of congealed in my mind. So, so any, any more questions? We're almost 1 o'clock, and uh, I'm going to let you go. This will hopefully be the last time we have to put our chairs up um, and put the, the room back in, the, at least in the shape. Now, listen, I, I, if it's not perfect, I'm not going to get upset because when we came to breakfast yesterday morning, there was nothing done here. We had to break the whole room down and, and set it up. So, um, no, I'm just kidding. We, we, want, we want to do it for them, so to put it back as we can. So anyway, let me pray. Let me ask forgiveness for that statement. Um, <laughs> and and uh, uh, we'll, 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 we'll turn you loose. Father, thank you so much. And, and we have had many, many ways of saying the same thing here. And that is that you bless us when we simply pursue you. Um, that there's a secret to life here, and, and, and it really is revealed to us um, that, that this is the secret to happiness, the secret to life, the secret to joy, the secret to fulfillment, the secret to growth, the secret to building kingdom treasure. Everything is built up to pursue you because you are, as we have established, you are the, you are the treasure. And we didn't do anything to to, uh, uh, to merit this treasure. It is 100% by your grace and your love. And so we thank you. We give you the glory. We know we'll be doing that for eternity. And I just thank you for the way that you continue to reveal these things to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. And God bless you.